Welcome back to the final video of organic chemistry. We're almost there. So you are going to name this one. What did you come up with? Well, we should have remembered that this is an ether or ether, however you want to say it, and that we name it by talking about the substituents that come off of this guy. Well, what's the one on the left called? This is a methyl group. And on the right, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons, which is a pentyl group. So we would just call it in alphabetical order, methyl, pentyl, ether, or ether, however you feel like saying it. So those are pretty easy. Now, what about carboxylic acids? Those are these carbons double bonded to an oxygen with a hydroxide coming off of them. And this functional group's always going to be at the end, just like a couple of the others we talked about, because, hey, it can't bond to anything else. It's pretty busy down here with all these oxygens. These are also known as what we would call organic acids, and they'll always be weak because they exist really organically and naturally, and a lot of times in our bodies. To name these, we use the name of the parent alkane, like always, and we drop the E, but on the end we put oic acid. If you remember phosphoric acid, um, that's a very common carboxylic acid. So here's an example. We have this guy on the end. That is what tells us that it needs to end in OIC and then acid. And it's got a chain that's four long. So that four tells me that it would normally be butane, but I'm going to change my ending so it turns into butanoic acid. How about this guy? That's a long one, and notice how different it looks here. Uh, this is really just showing us the same thing this guy does, because what would this be? CH2, CH2, CH3. This is just another way to write it. This could have three hydrogens coming off. This could have one. This would have two, one, two. You get the point. So let's figure out how long he is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 long. So it's decane, but we see this on the end, of this carboxylic acid. We know we need to change our ending to OIC. So we're going to have butanoic acid, but there's some other stuff going on here too. Two chlorines coming off of it. So we know we're going to have some sort of dichloro in our name. Last but not least, we have to figure out which carbon they're coming off of. We'll start down here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 7, 9, dichlorodecanoic acid. One day you'll remember a little bit of this naming and you'll be glad that you paid attention to this because it can get pretty overwhelming. Okay. Then we have our esters. Esters always have this C that's double bonded to an O and another O coming off of them, but they can be bonded on each side because this O is not quite happy until someone else comes along and neither is carbon. To name these guys, we treat the R group that's attached to our O over here as a substituent and we just change it to a YL on the end. And on the uh, parent alkane, that's going to be taking off an E and adding O-A-T-E. So the name will be something O, something O-8. So here's an example. Look at this nice long guy here. How many long is he and where are his substituents is what we're trying to say here. And this is what we're looking for in the middle. Right here's our ester. So we're going to call this guy ethyl butanoate because here's our four long carbon for butane and over here we have an ethyl so we have ethyl butanoate how about this one well we have this little guy coming off and this little guy coming off so we're just having a methyl ethanoate because this is an ethyl too long and this is our methyl over here methyl ethanoate. Good. So now you're a professional at naming organic compounds or hopefully at least a little bit more familiar with it. 
Um, good thing to know, good thing you'll use later in life, and it will definitely benefit you. So, thanks for watching. See you later.